So let's say you're a really nice person and you have thought about it for a really long time and you finally decided you are gonna adopt a child. But what would you do when some odd occurrences start going on and you start getting a little suspicious that the child you brought home might be 36 instead of six years old. So there's a woman out there claiming that that is exactly what happened to her when she adopted a six year old who she claimed at the time was over 20 years old. And overall, this is a complicated case. There's a bunch of documentation behind walls due to it being an adopted child. There is, the child has dwarfism. Uh, there's multiple families involved. The stories keep changing between the families. It's a convoluted situation and we're gonna try our best to see what is going on here and what is our take over here at MedBros on what the situation is. So this child is from the Ukraine and has been through multiple families before getting adopted by Michael and Christine Barnett, who this story, get started with. Everything seemed to go great. They were already foster parents. They run a daycare. It kind of was a solid match for this child. So the child's name is Natalia Grace and she actually has spondyloepiphyseal dwarfism, which we'll get into why that's important in a bit. So once she was taken in by Christine and Michael Barnett, it seemed like things were going okay until the family started noticing a couple odd things going on. So they were told that this girl was six years old and after a little while, they started to become suspicious of that. And this is why. For one, she had no interest in toys or any kind of games that children usually of her age were playing. She had a very sophisticated vocabulary and grammar and way of talking. There were also reports of stained clothing that could possibly be menstruation, which would is possible, but would be unlikely in a nine-year-old. There were multiple bone density scans done throughout the years, which kind of estimated her age to be around eight to 14 in the range. So not too far off, especially given that these tests are not the most accurate, but still did give a suspicion that the age was not accurate. There was also this doctor's note that we can see, but it is very suspect on if this doctor's note is legitimate. You can see there's very few medical terminology. It would be odd for a note to really be written like this in such a casual away um, usually notes are written up not meant for patients they're usually meant for other doctors to let them know what's going on so it's it's a bit confusing as to why the note is written in this fashion kind of suspicious so what happened next is where things got a little bit creepy as the mother explains it again this is all coming from the mother's perspective at this point christine barnett said that she confronted natalia about her age and natalia started behaving very strangely. And this is kind of the reason I wanted to cover this story because listening to this kind of gave me chills. Whether it's true or not, it is a bit creepy to think that somebody you adopted, you kind of bring into your family, and if this is true, is definitely sending some strange vibes. Apparently, Natalia would draw pictures of violence against her parents and against other family members. She would threaten other family members. She would threaten violence and threaten to actually kill her siblings. And the creepiest for me, I don't know why, I just can't do the waking up with something in your face, but the parents report that when they would wake up, sometimes she would be, Natalia, would be kind of looming over them, watching them sleep, which <laughs> I don't know. There were also accusations of Natalia putting bleach in the parents' coffee. There was accusations that she was trying to push them into electric fences, which I have no clue how that would work. And it is important to note that there's actually no evidence for a lot of these claims made by the parents. Some other things that I did want to note, the parents did say that she used to hear voices, see things, kind of have these psychiatric disturbances and appear to be kind of psychologically disturbed. Uh, I think that's really important to note as well. Following these suspicions, apparently one of the children in the family, one of the boys is really, really smart. So what they decided to do was kind of, again, strangely bail on Natalia, set her up in an apartment on her own under the premise that she possibly is 20 years old, uh, had some documentation kind of uh, adjusting her age and trying to get away with passing her as an independent so that she can live by herself in an apartment. And they all went over to Canada to pursue this prodigy's education. So at that point, the parents were charged with neglect and that's where we are now. This is a super summary of what's going on. There's a lot of he said, she said, she, she said. 
And as of right now, she's actually living with a new family that has taken her in who seems to be very supportive, very loving. They stated that they do not care what her age is. So very good outcome for her nevertheless. So it is very hard to determine what her correct age is with her records being sealed with the adoption papers. And that's just how it works. They kind of keep it all under lock and key. And just the overall idea that the mother had her age changed, the kind of motives behind that. And if you read into the stories behind her mother, all kind of point towards some suspicious activity Activity. So the controversy right now is why was this girl who is possibly a minor left alone in an apartment for over a year by herself to fend for herself with the parents just sending her rent and nothing else? Why was that allowed to happen? And is that negligence? Are these parents guilty? That's where we're at right now. What is the age? Does that, does the age matter? Does that absolve them if she was above 20? That's the whole deal going on right now. And the case is set to happen somewhere in the future in 2020. So you can look out for that result, but we're gonna go over a few things and kind of get to our opinions right now. So why is dwarfism important in this case? Well, dwarfism is a reason why we kind of can't solidify what her age is. It also is a reason why even if she was above 20, she probably shouldn't be left alone for over a year in that kind of handicap situation. So there are many kinds of dwarfism and this individual has spondyloepiphyseal dwarfism. And let's go into what exactly that means. So she actually has a mutation in type two collagen, which is really important in long bone growth, bone growth in general, growth plates, the whole shebang. So from birth, she's set to have a short stature, skeletal abnormalities, vision and hearing impairment, and other deformities of the spine. There are other kinds of dwarfism, such as achondroplasia, that actually only affect the long bone. So you might have short limbs, but your axial skeleton in your head might be normal sized. In her case, she's gonna have a short trunk, short neck, and short limb. Associated with this, she can also have an abnormal spine curvature or scoliosis. And with a deformed spine, she actually has a risk of spinal cord abnormalities, which can be very dangerous. Along with that, there can be even difficulty breathing due to abnormal chest wall formation. So it's quite clear why she can't be left alone. She's predisposed to arthritis. She's predisposed to breaking bones. She's predisposed to spinal injury. There's a lot of different factors of why she can't be left alone. And then you add on the emotional component that she seemed to be unstable. I believe one of the stories said that she was gonna fling herself out of a car at one point. So clearly a person that should not be living alone, regardless of the age, especially given the bone scans show she's possibly 8 to 14 nowhere near 20 something so it's a bit scary so getting down to the difficulty of pinning down her age aside from the documentation the dwarfism adds an extra layer of complexity so the way we usually tell someone's age and estimate someone's age is we can do a thorough physical exam on the physical exam we're looking at things like height Tanner stages. Tanner stages, we look at things like breast development, uh, pubic hair development, uh, testicular development, all sorts of different things that you can look at on a physical exam to try to estimate someone's age. So we can also do bone age studies, which is radiographically looking at usually the hands and wrists. And we really want to look at those growth plates because at different stages of growth and different ages, your growth plates are going to look different. So we can compare the x-rays of your growth plates to a standardized set of growth plates and kind of estimate where you fall on that and estimate your age. So these are good tests, but they are only estimates as we have to take into account a lot of other things like precocious puberty, which might be a big role in this particular case. Precocious puberty has been shown to occur more often in those with stressed environments in younger girls, usually from low poverty homes or someone like this who's going from home to home. These individuals might undergo puberty or menarche or a number of other things before individuals that do not face this stress. And that brings us to another point where there's a psychiatric component as well because developmental psychologists can also kind of look at where you are with your mental age. And of course, somebody that's been through a lot that's living at home for a year alone can actually have an accelerated mental age. So not only do we have to take precocious puberty into account for these tests, but we also have to take into account that she has this skeletal dysplasia, this problem with her growth plates that we're analyzing that these tests are depending on. So it's gonna be difficult to use that as an estimate. So you have the story of this girl that was adopted and was left at home with a handicap and was kind of mentally unstable at the time, according to the mother's stories. And she was left at home, she was neglected. It, this is a simple case of irresponsible parents that kind of tried to escape their problem from my perspective of it. From the information we're given, from the opinion I'm forming, from the limited kind of data that's out there, and from what I've seen in her interview and what we're going off of. Is that enough disclaimers? <laughs> 
So what Michael and Christine Barnett did is they adopted a individual with dwarfism that was a child that they swore to take care of, that they were responsible for, and kind of up and left to Canada and just left her in an apartment, regardless if she's 20, 21, regardless if she's 50. If she was kind of in this situation, uh, given her health, given her mental instability, she needed help. You cannot just leave somebody and go to Canada. You just can't do that. And then to add insult to injury, they go on to describe her as this creepy, kind of psychotic dwarf that was hovering above them while they slept. It just seems totally wrong to me. Now, is it possible that she is older? Is it possible that when they adopted her, she was 16 and now she's over 20, she's over 30? Sure, it's possible. I mean, records are lost. She's from the Ukraine. She's got this genetic disorder. It's possible. And kind of the way she sits there and conducts herself, I will agree that that is highly advanced for someone that's 15, 16 years old, but I wouldn't be surprised if she was 15, 16, given all that she's been through. And this might just be a super mature individual emotionally. From what I've seen, she's got a good head on her shoulders. She's got a great family now that is very supportive and loving and understanding and has even exclaimed they don't care about her age, which is just awesome. However you want to look at it, at the end of the day, you have these two parents, Michael and Christine, that adopted this girl with dwarfism, who they then tried to change around her age and left her alone and everything just seems very suspicious, very neglectful, and it didn't seem like they wanted the best for that child. And at this point, the situation is being sensationalized and being compared to the orphan movie that came out a while ago. And it's just an unfortunate situation. And again, could I be entirely wrong? Could she have been creepily hovering above their parents with a knife in her hand? Possibly. And I guess our justice system will try to figure it out, but there's no evidence of that. She's getting along with her family right now, perfectly fine. All opinions, all speculation, all just completely out in the air right now, guys. I would love to hear your opinion on this very convoluted situation. So make sure you guys comment, get engaged, join the discussion, and make sure you guys subscribe for more on this channel. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Yo, I really did get chills though, thinking about adopting somebody who then just grabs a knife and kind of watches you sleep.